Hi everyone, and welcome back. I um, actually got a lot of stitching done this week, so I felt like, yes, I can make a YouTube video um, this weekend and put it out because I actually have some things to show. Progress has been made, and this is a very good thing. So far, 2020 is very similar to 2019 in many, many, many respects. But um, still doing a lot of stitching, still doing floss tube, and using a lot of my energy to focus on that and having something positive in my life. So anyway, um, I guess big update number one is that I have made a lot of progress on my Chatelaine that has been really fun to work on. Um, it's Egypt Garden. So let me show you what that looks like finished. So here is my progress on my Egypt Garden by Chatelaine. Um, last time I showed you this, I had completely um, finished the square, the inside, the inside square. And I was able to do the stitching around here, including the back stitching and all of the stems. And the stems are the same colors inside the pond. It's a Gloriana. And then there are two colors of Gloriana that make up the, you know, purple, bluish purple flowers. And you know what? Oh my gosh, a new, a new bow and needle and Gloriana thread on Picture This Floss fabric. I mean, it goes like butter. It's so luscious and nice. Um, I have had to make myself stop working on this. Make myself stop. But I enjoy every second of it and I think it's really, I think it's really great. However, there's a big however in this. I have an issue because I'm using the digital pattern and I can't show it to you. Um, you know, if I print it out, it's so microscopic, I can't read it. So I just have it on my Samsung tablet and that's been working really nicely, except for the fact that this whole area, this whole area is surrounded by dark blue. And it looks like there are either one or two shades of dark blue in the background here. And then there's a really dark blue and black around the edges of it. I can't tell which one is which. Like I know the black obviously, but I honestly like, I can't tell. Um, so I replaced the DMC with um, some NPIs and Soie Delger. So here is the um, replacement for the navy. So this one I'm pretty sure is on the border along with the black so that's good. And then I honestly can't tell. There are two shades of silk. And they're both really pretty and they're really really close so on camera in this light I think it's kind of easier to tell the difference maybe not so my question to myself was is it even worth it to try to differentiate between the two colors because the placement of the different colors is kind of random so it would take a fair deal of counting and part of me said, maybe I should just pick one and use that and fill in the back. And I don't think it would make a difference. So that's kind of been my Chatelaine dilemma because the next step for this is to do the fill in, the dark blue fill in for the background. And I think it'll look wonderful. It'll make the flowers pop even more splendid and magnificent and everything. Um, the other thing I thought of is maybe I won't have enough with just one skein. Of course, I could order a second skein or I could say, you know, I will do sort of half of it in kind of the lighter 
and then the one that's slightly darker do the rest of it and then over on the outside then I'm working with black and navy so that's another thing that I may do I think whatever I do it'll look beautiful but it just um, uh, the pattern doesn't have symbols it only has colors and the colors are really really close so anyway hopefully again my plan for next time is to have a lot done on this and we'll see where we're at I have also made a lot of progress on Lady Hera by Mirabilia. Um, so let me show you the finished version of that. And here is Lady Hera by Mirabilia. I have actually gotten quite a bit of work done on this, which makes me very happy. Um, the first thing that I did was I completely finished the curtain the beads in the curtain and all of the flowers in the bottom portion of the dress and once I got that done I was thrilled because I knew I was kind of on the home stretch now the peacock's tail is tremendously huge like I'm not even going to be able to fit the peacock's tail on what's left over I'm going to have to roll it up again but I was very happy because I was able to finish the DMC stitching in this whole section and go back and do all three colors of Cranic and two colors of beads to kind of get this section completely done. Um, and, you know, this is the first time that I've had to highlight a Mirabilia pattern because there are kind of so many things going on, but the result is so beautiful that, you know what, I don't mind it at all. But anyway, I'm actually, I'm afraid that I'm going to run out of my light um, turquoise cranic. But I'll cross that bridge when we come to it. My hope is that, um, actually, if I focus on this, I hope to finish it by Valentine's Day. So we'll see. I've got, you know, three weeks or so. So anyway next week or whenever i'm hoping to have a lot of good progress on this to show you and until then i will just be working on the peacock's tail and i've made progress in other ways too so i have really been excited to work on um oops miss bingley's library by plum street so there we go it says, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. A very good saying. Um, although I don't think Miss Bingley actually believed it when she said it. But that's something else entirely. Um, oh, so lots of progress has been made on this. Here's what it looks like now. So the house is mostly finished, except the um, I need to stitch around the attic windows, and I need another set of smoke coming up from the chimney. I need to backstitch the books and do a little cardinal here and finish the saying at the bottom. Um, so the the name of the game with this one has been like almost run out of like every color that I'm using. So this I had said last time for the house I had to cut out two rows um, that go all the way across so the house is a little bit sort of squatter than it should be. Um, and I and then I had not even enough to do the area around the windows um, in the attic. So that's another issue that I have to solve. Um, a big change, I mean, I kept largely the colors are in the spirit of the original piece, especially the main sort of focus on it. The inside of the windows were originally supposed to be a mottled, pretty deep brown color, and I decided to use Swa Cristal 80, which is this really, really nice, um, like clear, pale, bluish gray, which I think is absolutely perfect for a window pane like bang on perfect and small crystal is like not my favorite floss 
to work with. Um, it just kind of kept catching on itself and it wasn't as smooth, but the look that I wanted, it was perfect in that way. And so I was happy I used it. Um, I also, instead of the brown for the lettering, I am using like an eggplant. It's sort of a uh, mottled dark purple. And I'm, I'm liking how that's turning out. So I, th I mean, I think, you know, do I jinx myself if I say by next week, I hope to have this finished? We'll see. Um, yeah, it would be nice. Oh, and I have to finish the flag too. So it would be nice to have, to have a finish in January. That would be lovely. So, um, and <laughs> a funny story. So I used, um, for the divisions between the window panes and the windows, I used Weeks Dye Works tin roof. And I always forget that the Weeks Dye Works is five yards and not eight because I got down to oh, the last, um, I had 13 stitches left in the last window and like I had no thread left in this color. I was like, oh no, what am I? What am I going to do? Um, because I knew that if I ordered it again, you know, pay for shipping for a single floss and um, it would probably look significantly different. So I was thinking, you know, I'll just kind of pick some DMC and, you know, and it'll be fine. I'll just do like a light gray or something. Um, and somebody saved the day. So meet for a second time Annabelle Fluffykins. She um, was home with me and my daughter and she came crawling out from under somewhere and she had a length of tin roof on her back and I plucked it off and it wasn't you know like dirty or and you know she has hair not fur so she doesn't um, shed good job. Um, but she, I was able to thread my needle and use it and do the last 13 stitches and hurrah. So anyway, very serendipitous, saved by the puppy. And, um, so anyway, just a funny story because it's the whole, the theme of this whole piece has been like me running out of thread or <laughs> not knowing which floss color to use and all of that. But anyway, it's, working out okay. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to get it done. It will be a finish, I think. Um, before I go into other stuff, so those are, so Chatelaine, Lady Hera, Miss Bingley's Library were the three cross stitch pieces that I focused on a lot. And then I did actually work on my counted canvas piece. So this is from Nancy's Needle. It's called Floral Star. And I really loved the kind of pink, green, blue combination with a little accent of purple. And I'm getting really close. Really, really, really close. And here it is. So all I have left to do are, I've got a thin, oops, sorry. I've got a thin, then um, this sparkly purple is from Petite Treasure Braid, and it's like the devil to work with. Oh, like it, it is not my favorite. So I'm hoping that I won't like, that this won't languish for a while because it, it's the little um, kind of diamonds here, and then it's a border that goes all the way around. But I really want it done. And I mean, the look is pretty, but it's just that the thread, the slightest little thing, and it just, it pulls apart and then, and then it's really hard to work with and, or I shouldn't work with it and it's very wasteful and I don't know. So there is that purple border all the way around and then there's a dark green, thin, they're both thin, thin border all the way around and then it's done. And then I have another one to do, but that's fine. 
Um, so anyway, yes. So I had my focus on four pieces and I had not intended, like I, at the beginning I thought I'm going to do stitch from stash and um, yeah, that might not work out so well. Um, I decided to join a stitch along with the Crafty Peacock Stitchery and other floss tubers as well um, to work on the Peacock Keeper by Lindy Stitches. And I've had this pattern for a little while since November. Yes, since November. And so um, I thought when I was graciously invited to um, join, I thought, well, I already own the pattern. So like, I just have to get some of the materials and I can dye a piece of fabric myself to kind of look like this and it'll be great. Um, so I ended up ordering um, Classic Color Works and they are really, really, really nice colors. And actually the, the blue, the presidential blue is coming in very soon. Um, it's not here yet. So lovely colors. And the, there's a nice kind of medium um, blue that goes with it. And so I was going to frog a project I had started and then dye the fabric and I thought, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I ended up um, ordering the fabric as well. I, it is a 32 count Belfast linen in jazz by Picture This Plus. So I ordered it. It's on its way along with the presidential blue. And as soon as that comes in, I plan on starting it. So add another whip to the pile. And that's why I'm like, okay, I've got to get a few things done here because I'm adding on. I had also intended to do the stitch along from Caterpillar cross stitch um, that is starting on January 24th. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do that anymore. I'm not sure if my heart is in it. Um, I'd really wanted to do like a mystery sal, but maybe I'll do something else. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I've got, you know, some thinking to do about that. And I have plenty to stitch. So, you know, there is not, um, you know, not that I won't have anything to stitch, but I just have some thinking to do about that. And sorry, the, the light here is changing like considerably. So I've had, it's been like super cloudy and all of a sudden it's sunny and you know, whatever. Um, so I think by next week, weekend, I'm hoping to, um, have made some decisions to, you know, start the Peacock Keeper and decide what I'm going to do about the other stitch along if I'm going to go ahead and do it or not. I do have some white linen, so it's not like a super specific piece. I could always use that linen for something else, either keep it white or dye it, and that would be totally fine. Um, so I just have a couple of decisions to make and that should be okay. Haul. I have some haul. I just couldn't help myself. And I, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I find that um, as I've gotten back into cross stitch and I'm remembering patterns that I really liked that I never stitched and never bought and are out of print and hard to find, I start to feel that like, you know, when I'm looking at them, I'm like, oh my God, is this, am I not going to be able to find this? Or will it be like a hundred dollars on eBay? And uh, so, um, just, you know, trying to be judicious, but I have purchased a couple of things, um, some that are not here yet that are a little bit older that I, um, that I just want. One thing I purchased and I've not been a big, um, really sampler stitcher. I mean, I'm stitching the Plum Street, um, but I've been watching a lot of people stitching samplers and one that caught my eye was Christmas Garden by Blackbird Design. And of course it's an old, older chart, but it can still be gotten in this book, Home for the Holidays. 
So I found it online on sale for like $20, which I thought was a really good price. And let me show you the picture of it, you know, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, so that's what it looks like. I, I think with this, what I'm going to do, I was watching someone, I forget who it was, um, this only uses four different colors. It uses a, um, like a red, a green, a gold, and a brown. And I watched somebody who converted this to Gloriana to use kind of like brighter, shinier. So I think that's what I'm going to do, convert it to Gloriana. Um, I probably will choose kind of a neutral background to it. And I think, um, in order to not spend like a thousand dollars on floss, I will probably pick like a 36 or maybe even a 40 count on which to stitch this so that I can use one uh, strand of floss over two. But anyway, so that is my, that is my, one of my new finds and just a few other like quick things. So, um, <laughs> I, I bought this ironically. So this is Lizzie Kate and it says, housework never killed anyone, but why take a chance? And I love it. I want to do it very soon. Um, and the irony of it is that my living space has always been very neat and my classrooms have always been very neat and organized and, um, so anyway, I just thought this was ironic and cute and pretty. And it actually, this one um, calls for Weeks Dye Works thread. So I don't know if I'm going to use the called for, but chances are I'll probably, because this is, this is small, I will um, select fabrics that have been in my stash and, and just um, maybe use a natural linen or something. But anyway, so purchase this. And I purchased, um, so this is Butternut Road or Marilyn Levitt Emblem who designed lavender and lace. This is called Once Upon a Time. I'm sorry about the glare. There, I think that's better. And I just really, really liked kind of having the castle motif in the back and the woman's, the woman's dress. I think it's really beautiful. And this was one um, that is quite, quite old. So I just worried that I wouldn't be able to find it. Um, so I went and picked this up. It wasn't expensive. All from 123 Stitch. And last but not least, I couldn't help myself. I got Peacock and Pomegranate um, by Cartage Garden. And I loved this because it has like a primitive look to it, but it uses very bright, um, Kind of saturated colors it's all charted for dmc and folks this is huge like i i thought this would be sort of like you know well not that that really helps you but i i thought it would be like moderately sized and on okay so if i used a like a 28 count and did two over two it would be about 10 and a half inches high and 20 and a half inches wide. 20 and a half inches wide. That's huge, huge. So even if I take it down to 36 count, which I'm thinking I'm going to do, it's still eight and one eighths inches high and 16 inches wide. So it's, it's still big and will probably take a while and take a bit of stitching, but I think it's pretty and um, I seem to be kind of having a thing for peacocks lately. Um, maybe Lady Hera has converted me there. <laughs> They're very pretty. Um, so anyway, that is, you know, that's it for haul. And I think for um, the following week, I will try to finish Miss Bingley's library. I will try to make a ton of progress on my Lady Hera. I will try to solve my Chatelaine conundrum and start stitching on that and hopefully make progress in that way as well as maybe finish my Counted Canvas piece Floral Star. 
and then if I can, if I can get, you know, my Miss Bingley's library finished, I'd like to start the Peacock Keeper, assuming my fabric comes in. It's funny that with one, two, three stitch, sometimes I get my orders in like three days, like really, really, really quickly. And sometimes it takes like more than two weeks um, for the same size package. And that's fine. I mean, like she's typically like super fast and I love shopping there, but I just never, you know, like everything, I don't really know when it's coming in. But I'm hoping to be able to show you a start on that the next time I'm on here. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I love all your comments and I will see you in a week or so and hopefully have a lot to show you. Thanks. Bye.